Where does America stand? America is uh, at a crossroads because both sides seem to not like the country that much anymore. <laughs> the left doesn't like America because of what America has been. America's so evil. It's got the original sin, and so uh, that's the slavery, and so it's always bigoted and evil. And the right is increasingly disenchanted with America because America is standing for what? America is standing against the rule of law, standing against self-government. America is standing against Christianity. America is standing against even the distinction between men and women. And America's values that we're exporting around the world are what? It's wokeness and the rainbow flag. You just had the Pentagon confirm that LGBTism is a, a key American value that we are protecting overseas. That's what, we're, that's what we're exporting. No longer truth, justice in the American way. We're just trying to raise a pride flag in Kandahar. Okay, count me out of intervention then, I guess. Sonny Hostin made this point on The View. Sonny Hostin, one of the cackling hens, who, who said, America, we're no better than any other country around the world. When I listened to Christopher Wray, the, pres- the, the head of the FBI, he said white supremacy is the biggest domestic threat to this country. And so as a woman of color with a six foot two black kid in college and a five foot seven, five foot eight black kid in high school, I don't see that part of American exceptionalism. I'm sorry. No. I think this country has a lot of problems that could be solved. Yes, maybe they're putting uh, Muslims in jail in Afghanistan, I think you mentioned. And China. And China, they're putting a lot of black, more black people in jail but here. Can I- there it is. So, so yeah, sure, China is engaged in a process of mass sterilization. They've long been engaged in a process of uh, mass slaughter through abortion. And yeah, they're, they're engaged in ethnic cleansing and they're sending a particular religious and ethnic group to a prison camp. But America arrests black street criminals. So it's like kind of, it's kind of the same thing, right? I don't think it's the same thing. You'll see a lot of knee-jerk right-wing reactions to this clip from The View. They'll say, you're anti-American. How dare you make a comparison between America and any other country on earth? I don't think that's necessarily beyond the pale. I'm not opposed in principle to making these kinds of comparisons. I made one of these comparisons yesterday. I said that the United States, uh, we al- allege that we're going to ban TikTok. That's why the, the Uniparty in Washington, D.C. is in favor of this bill, the Restrict Act, to ban TikTok. Except the bill doesn't ban TikTok. What it does is it gives the government and unaccountable bureaucrats more control over what people get to say on the internet. That's my problem with it. We point out that China has a social credit score. Well, America, in many ways, has a social credit score. If you say things that are heterodox or if you say things that contradict the, the prevailing line of the regime, or if you say things that are genuinely nasty, you can be completely ostracized from society, put on a no-fly list, debanked, kicked off of every social platform. You, you're just done. Is that so different from a social credit score? China has mass surveillance. Oh, you want to talk to Americans about mass, mass surveillance? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think... I think uh, we, we know a thing or two about surveillance of our own citizens in this country. Well, in China, they arrest political dissidents. Oh, uh, yeah. Tell me, how are the grannies doing in solitary confinement? Because they decided to take a picture in the Capitol Rotunda on January 6th, the worst day ever in the history of the world. Yeah. No, I, look, these comparisons are fine to make. It's a way of improving our own country. But the comparison that Honey, Sonny Hostin is making here is inapt. What Sonny Hostin is doing is simply encouraging criminality. Saying, yeah, the the Chinese are persecuting the Uyghurs the way the American government persecutes black men. The difference is the Uyghurs aren't committing crimes. And they're not having the law, which applies to everybody, just enforced against them sometimes, frankly, not even all of the time, which is what we're talking about here. When you say, well, black men are being arrested at disproportionately high rates. Not really. They're, They're just committing crimes at disproportionately high rates. Would that it were not so. Well, it'd be great. Let's try to reform something. That's fine by me. But the libs don't want to reform anything. In fact, the libs want to encourage criminality and go easier on the criminals, which means they won't be rehabilitated. They won't be reformed. These problems are going to persist. They're going to plague, in particular, these communities. But if you go soft on it, you're just going soft on crime, which is, of course, what the libs want to do. 
The libs encourage this criminality because it allows them to clamp down and claim more power, and it allows them to use these groups of people as a cudgel to intimidate ordinary, innocent civilians. I'm not just talking about street criminals in the inner cities. I'm talking about people at universities. There's a Wayne State University professor, Stephen Shaviro, who has just come out and encouraged leftists to murder me, to murder me, to murder Matt Walsh, to murder Ben, to murder murder all of us here at the Daily Wire, and to murder Tennessee legislators, and to, to, but specifically to murder conservatives who come to college campuses and speak out in defense of reality against the absurdity of transgender ideology. Here's what he said. He said, Here is what I think about free speech on campus. Although I do not advocate violating federal and state criminal codes, I think it is far more admirable to kill a racist, homophobic, or here's the key, transphobic speaker than it is to shout them down. What does transphobic mean? It means pro-reality. Transphobic, the irrational fear of, of affirming disturbed people in their misperception of reality of encouraging people who, according to at least one major study, are the most likely to support violent radicalization, to encourage them to kill us. That's what the professor's done. The professor has been suspended. He obviously should have been fired on the spot and perhaps should be prosecuted. I'm not sure that this statement rises quite to the level of a direct threat, but we are all giving speeches now. We'll see. I've got a lot of speeches lined up. I have no intention of shutting them down there. I think that we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how much vengeance the, the libs are trying to wreak. But as of now, all of these speeches are on and uh, we're going to continue. We're going to continue to speak the truth. And I don't care if some Wayne State University professor is threatening to or encouraging his students to kill us all we will not be made in lies. This is, uh, we will not be made to live in lies. This is, this is the greatest political revolution in the history of the world. It's the political revolution of Christianity. Until the incarnation and the crucifixion and the resurrection, until that time, political rulers had a trump card, which is, if you don't do what we say, even if what we say is harmful, even if, we, if what we say is false, if you don't live according to the lies that we insist you live under, we will kill you. And that was that, and that's the end of life, and then you're over. And what the pivot of history, the incarnation, inaugurates is a period in which political rulers lost that trump card. Because no matter how tyrannical and powerful a political ruler is, they can't can't take away your soul, and they can't take away your eternal life. They can can make you scream, but they can't make you talk. (laughs) <laughs> they can't make you repeat their lies. They can make you scream. They can harm your body, but they can't take away your life, ultimately. They can't take away your life. We've got a lot more coming up in the member block. We've got a lot on AI. Producer Jacob has taken over the show today. We'll see how he does. Head on over to the Knowles Stradamus member room segmentum, dailywire.com slash Knowles. Promo code Knowles at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. 